Now to New York, where Pierre Burton and the U.S. critic Lionel Trilling talk to Vladimir Nabokov. Mr. Trilling, as a critic, I think you'd be interested in a remark made about Lolita, which is, I suppose everybody knows by now it's the so-called shocking book about the obsessive love of a middle-aged man for a 12-year-old girl, a remark made by a Canadian writer, Nicholas Montserrat, who didn't like the book. He said that he found the subject so debased and horrible that it destroys the book as a work of art. He went on to say that he'd vote to ban it. I'd like to hear what uh, Mr. Nabokov has to say for the defense about this. Well, I'm, I'm not particularly interested in those uh, foolish attacks. Mm, some of them are very amusing. But I would say that most, uh, most of the haters of Lolita in the, in the USA are, are just common scolds and uh, old Philistines. What do you mean by a Philistine, Mr. Nabokov? Users of covers and cozies, uh, ready-made souls in plastic bags, negligible generalities. Mr. Turling, would you uh, identify Mr. Montserrat with a, that definition of a Philistine? Well, I, in this particular instance, yes, I think I would. I think the book is shocking. Uh, I'm glad that it's shocking. I think we need a lot of shocking books. I don't think we need to be shocked, but it's absurd to call it debased. It's anything but that. It's the critics, as, as Mr. Nabokov knows, have said a great many things about this book. I'd like to see if he agrees with them. I'll quote some of them to you. Uh, one critic called it a satire on sex, a mirror of human frailties. Another said that it was a joke on our national cant about youth. A third that it was a cutting expose of chronic American adolescence and shabby materialism. Is this so? Is this what you were intending? I, do, I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, first of all, um, I, 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 do not, I don't wish to touch hearts, and I, I don't even want to affect minds uh, very much. What I want to produce is really uh, that little sob uh, in, in the spine of the artist reader. Uh, uh, well, I, I leave the field of ideas to, uh, uh, to Dr. Sh uh, Schweitzer and to, to Dr. Zhivago. Uh, and uh, when you say satire, you, you imply a purpose, uh, an object, uh, an awakening, uh, apart from and beyond the dream of the book. I have uh, invented uh, uh, in America, my, my America, and just as fantastic as any inventor's uh, America. Uh, Could you be more attractive? Uh, well, I, I think I think that uh, you have noticed, but some reviewers have not noticed how, how helpless and, and how lovely she, she, she is. It was it was it was fun to to, to breed her in my uh, in my in my own uh, laboratory. But, but I'm not uh, concerned in holding up to uh, in holding up public abuses to to ridicule or or, or, or that kind of thing. But there is there is an underlying uh, well, tone yes, of yes, satire yes. through the book. But now uh, now if you give uh, you give to satire its its initial uh, its original uh, sense of Macedoine. Of, of fruit salad, uh, satira, uh, then perhaps my, my dish is, is, is good enough for, for, that, for that purpose. But you say that your book isn't meant to produce emotions in readers. I'd like to ask Mr. Trilling, as we move over, over here, if, if it didn't produce some emotion in him. It oh, yes, indeed. it did indeed. I, it, uh, I found it a deeply moving book. Mr. Nabokov may not have meant to move hearts, but he, he moved mine. He may not have meant to affect minds, but he did affect my mind. Uh, and I think uh, uh, I found it a most uh, more than just a tingle at the end of your spine, as Mr. Oh, yes. Uh, said. Yes, it was. Uh, 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 you can't trust a creative writer to say what he what he has done. Uh, he can say what he meant to do, and even then, we don't have to believe him. Uh, no, I was deeply moved by the book. I think it's one of the most moving books I've read in a long time. But Mr. Novokov is also saying, as I gather, that he has no message at all in this book. Well, I don't feel I, I have any uh, special message, uh, and uh, if, well, if, 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 if you ask me, for instance, whether my, my own ideas are those uh, of, of which... Of Humbert, uh, which Humbert, Humbert the Humbert, main Humbert. character in the book. No, I, I, I would say no. Of course, he's a European and a man of uh, letters, as I am, but I've been very careful, uh, I've taken great care to, to separate myself from, from him. Uh, for instance, the, the good reader notices that uh, Humbert Humbert uh, confuses, um, uh, just to take uh, an instance, uh, hummingbirds with uh, hawk mouths. Now, I would never do that being an entomologist. Uh, You're an expert in butterflies. I am, I am to, to, to a certain extent, um, uh, but, uh, and I would never, I never do, uh, do that. Well, there are many other things, uh, uh, many Humbert, other matters Humbert, which, uh, I, which, I, which I, li I leave to him. No, there, there I think nobody would uh, suppose that the author and the uh, hero uh, would well, in any way it has, it has been supposed. It, 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 it has been supposed. Well, Humbert Humbert, and besides several odd tastes, also 
hates American motels. He despises them. He Have is, you this feeling? Yes. Uh, n no, uh, well, I, I must say there are some absolutely delightful motels where I've been very happy, very happy with Humbert Humbert, uh, uh, writing the book, uh, but uh, which I could not use because uh, the book is slanted in, in a different way. You would see way. a motel as something rather grotesque. Uh, no, not necessarily. A motel no. can be anything. Well, let's uh, get down to the really intriguing point, Mr. Nabokov. What gave you the idea for Lolita, the story of a middle-aged man and a 12-year-old girl and their love affair. Yes, yes. How did you start it? Well, in a, in a little, in a little uh, after piece, which I, which I have to my book, I, I, I talk about the, a certain ape uh, who was uh, taught to use a charcoal and um, to sketch the, the bar. And the first thing that, 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 the, that the, 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 the poor little animal did was to sketch the bars of its own cage, you see. Is this an analogy? Uh, uh, well, I, yes, I, I, I read that, st that story in a newspaper, and if I try to rationalize the, the impact of that image, I would say that, that my baboon, Humbert Humbert, because after all, Humbert Humbert is a baboon, born of genius, perhaps, but a baboon, uh, is, uh, is doing exactly that, you see. He is, he is drawing and shading and erasing and, and redrawing the bars of his cage, the bars between him and uh, what he terms the, the human herd. And this cage, uh, I take it, is this obsessive and rather frightening love it is, uh, for this it girl. Is, yes, it, 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 it is his, his, his passion, uh, the, 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 the pattern of his, uh, of, of his passion. But uh, let's get down to the, the more specific point. Why did you choose this rather odd and something that's never been done before, this curious and debased love? Well, I think Why because on the whole, it uh, afforded me all kinds of interesting uh, possibilities. I'm, I'm not so much uh, interested in the philosophy of the book as I am in, uh, in weaving the thing in, in a certain way, uh, in those intergradations and interweavings of certain themes and uh, sub-themes. Uh, for instance, this thematic uh, line of uh, Mr. Quilty, whom uh, Humbert will kill, and does kill, and whom uh, Humbert uh, mentions as early as page 33, uh, and so on. And he appears several times throughout the book, uh, and uh, well, uh, <coughs> putting him into the book. But right, you must uh, have uh, you must have read in a newspaper or been, uh, been aware of this strange sexual s symbolism or this oddity in a minority of humans, which has shocked so many people about Lolita. Uh, I have read a considerable number of case histories. Uh, I uh -huh. would say that I became quite an expert uh, in those matters. Uh, I I have not well I have not combined it combined them for the purpose of writing the book, but they have influenced me in one way or another, just giving me certain information. Mr. Trilling has a very intriguing theory about Lolita. Uh, he thinks it's a return to the old kind of romantic, shocking love, but I'll let him explain it, and I'd like to hear what you have to say about it. Well, Mr. Burton, my, my, it isn't uh, quite to be dignified by calling it a theory, but my reading of the book uh, led me to feel that despite the uh, judgments that a good many people have made on, on it as a book about sex and sexual obsession, uh, that although it is indeed a very erotic book, a very sexual book, if you wish, uh, it, is, it is not a book uh, so much about an aberration as about uh, an actual love, and, and a love that uh, makes all the terrible demands that almost any love makes, certainly that any sexual love makes, but that is very full of tenderness and very full of uh, compassion as well as passion. And uh, it occurred to me to say that um, uh, this particular love uh, that Mr. Nabokov had uh, chosen uh, as the love object of his hero, uh, a young girl, some, someone who is usually preserved from the sexual attentions of, uh, of men, uh, a very young girl of 12, as I recall, uh, because he wanted to reconstitute that uh, the shocking nature, the scandalous nature, that once used to uh, attend, uh, that once used to uh, characterize uh, the famous love affairs, the, the love affairs of great stories. Do you think stories, that uh, love should be scandalous and is no longer scandalous? Is that well, what I you're trying to say? I don't say? think that love should be scandalous. <laughs> I'm a very respectable man. I think that all the great love stories have, have been scandalous. They, for, for example, they have been adulterous. They have been stories not of oh, right. love between married people, but... Uh, uh, between uh, people who ought not be in let love. Let me interrupt you here and let Mr. Ma Nabokov have his say here. Yes, well, we, well, it seems to me that uh, all worthwhile novels, after all, are concerned with uh, passion love. 
uh, and apart from Humbert and the uh, there, there does exist, has always existed, in novels, uh, as well as in, um, as in life, if you take a novel, but take Anne, Anne Karenin, you know, Tolstoy's Anne Karenin with Kitty and, and Lovin, uh, which, um, which have a relationship, you see, also in, our, in ordinary life in Europe and America, which uh, may be termed passionate love, glamorous love, uh, within the terms of normal marriage. So we, we, have, the, we, we have that too. Yes, we I do, but th that is not... They don't make books, isn't that your that point? They it, it's not called Kitty, and it's not called Levin, it's called Anna Karenina. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that I think that Kitty and Levin are, just, are, are just as alive as, uh, as Anna is, uh, and the rather, uh, yes. well, dummy-like uh, Ronsky. Yes, but it seems... Uh, yes, uh, uh, but it seems to me that all great love affairs are tragic. Uh, but they all end in yeah, death, yeah. Uh, as, as yours does. And uh, well, I, I would put it that, uh, this way: that if, if, if sex, you see, is the is the sermon made of art, uh, love is the lady of that tower. Oh, yes. uh, uh, what Mr. Trilling is saying, I think, is your book is about love and not about sex. Do I, I okay. interpret? And I agree with him perfectly in there. But a great many people who are shocked by this book think it is a book about sex, right? Oh yes. But, and because it is destructive, and because it is uh, because the, the love is destructive or cruel or many other things, it is no less love. In fact, that is why it is love. Love is often is, is these things very often. That's because they, they they think in cliches. For them, sex is something so well defined that there's a kind of gap between it and love. They don't know what love is, perhaps, and perhaps they don't know what sex is either. Has sex become mm. a literary cliché so that people can't recognize anything else? Uh, I'll say yes. 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 You uh, say yes. Yeah. And, uh, well, I have to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you um, one fast question before we close, Mr. Nabokov. You put a word in the language, nymphet. Is this going to be your mo your monument? Do you feel <laughs> that you've accomplished it something? It is a very small uh, <laughs> monument, but it is a delicate mon monument, and it is, it is pleasant to have at, um, somewhere in the garden, in the shade. It is a word that is cropping up. You must see this word starting out at you. Uh, I, I see it constantly. I see it constantly. It is a pleasant feeling. There will be nymphed clothes very soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Trilling, Mr. Nabokov. Talking about Lolita.